Hi, Colorado Church. We're so glad that you've joined with us for service today. Whether it's your first time with us or you've been with Colorado Church since the very beginning, we're thankful to have you with us today. And if it is your first time joining with us, we would love to connect with you. We'd love to hear from you. And so we'd ask you to fill out a Connect card. You can find that at colorado.church connect. And that Connect card is just our way of being able to say thank you for joining with us today. And it gives us the opportunity to show you a next step as you continue to connect with us at Colorado Church. You know, in this season of physical separation, another great way to connect with each other is through small groups. Our groups are meeting every single week, and as we are preparing to start a new semester of small groups, there has never been a better time to jump into a group. And so you can find all of those available groups, and more will be popping up in the coming weeks. You can find all those groups at colorado.church slash groups. Take a look there, see which ones are open. You can contact the leaders for more information and join a group in these coming weeks. But we don't have to wait for small groups to connect. We can actually do that just today. You can join our virtual lobby right after service ends. Just head to colorado.church slash lobby as soon as our service ends ends today if you're watching live on Sunday morning. And we would love to connect with you that way. We'll be there. Uh, You can connect with each other. Our elders will be there. And so we would love to see you right after service in that space. You know, as we head into our worship service today, I just want to give an encouragement. I know if you're anything like me, I'm a little bit okay, a lot of a control freak. And so if things aren't exactly going the way I want them to, or things just kind of seem out of control, I can feel like my whole life is out of control. But we know that we serve a loving, caring God, and he works out all things for his good. And Paul actually wrote to the church in Rome to tell them exactly that. And so I want to read from Romans chapter 8 as we head into our worship service today. Paul writes this in Romans 8, starting in verse 28. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. And we know that God created every single one of us for a specific purpose. He gave us a role to play in his kingdom. And so as we go into worship today, let that be in the back of our minds that when things seem out of control or not going the way we might want them to, that God works out all things for his good and has called us to a specific purpose. Let's worship together as we keep that in mind. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. An empty place, and treasures that fade are never enough. And you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied Here in your love Lord, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Nothing is better than you Cause the God of the mountain Is the God of the valley Oh, and there's not a place Your mercy 
this love pour over you unprecedented and ununderstood just let 
his presence pour over you. Heavenly Father, we say yes to your promises. We hold on to your truth and we press into your presence. God, we ask that you would draw us into the secret place where we can spend time with you, where we can hear your voice, God, and where we are transformed into your likeness. And so we say yes to every single promise spoken in your word. God, we surrender our hearts to you right now. We open up our minds and we ask that you would breathe over us and unlock the scriptures to see you. God, give us a fresh revelation of who you are for us and help each one of us to hear your voice clearly today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, my heart is so full. God gave me a message for today, and we're going to start a new series called The Holy Who, and it's a simple study of the Holy Spirit. And so what I want to do over these next couple of weeks as we walk our way towards Pentecost is I want to simply explain who the Holy Spirit is and and why it's the best kept secret uh, for New Testament Christians and how it can radically transform your relationship with the Lord and help and allow you to experience revival. All of us are desperate to experience the Lord's presence, to hear his voice like never before. There's so many other voices in our life. And what we need to do is we need to press in and make sure that we are hearing and listening to and responding to the voice of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit will do that for us. You know, scripture says that the Holy Spirit comes alongside of us as as a comforter and as a counselor. And so my desire over the next couple of weeks is if if you don't know very much about the Holy Spirit, I want this to be a simple introduction for you. And, and maybe it'll encourage you to sort of lean into those uh, verses, those passages that talk about the Holy Spirit. You know that it's, Jesus said it's to our benefit that he leave. And so if it's to our benefit, that means that the Holy Spirit is actually uh, an advantage to us. And so I want us to learn about that. And so uh, it's sort of bubbling up inside of me. And so I want to jump right in and tell you that um, we're going we're gonna to swing into the book of Revelation today, if you can believe it, um, and then pull ourselves out and uh, listen to the words of Jesus and loop this in and land on the topic of, uh, of receiving the Holy Spirit. And so uh, Paul obviously wrote a majority of the New Testament. And he wrote a letter to a church in what is now modern day Turkey uh, that actually got lost. It's not in your Bible. It's not in my Bible. And it was a letter that he wrote to the church of Laodicea. And we know that because in the letter that he wrote to uh, the people in Colossae, the letter called Colossians, he actually mentions that letter and he encourages the the people uh, of Colossae to actually trade letters, swap letters, because those two uh, villages were not too far apart. And so uh, Paul was writing two letters, but he wanted them to read both of them publicly as the church is gathered. And so um, Colossians 4, 16 says this, when this letter has been read among you, have it read also in the church of Laodiceans and see that you also read the letter from Laodicea. But that letter somehow disappeared in antiquity and we don't have any record of it. But what's really intriguing to me is in your Bible, there's actually a letter that is recorded and captured in the final book of the New Testament. And that letter is actually written to the church of Laodicea. And so we're going to jump into that because that letter recorded by John is the very words of Jesus speaking to that church. And I think it's relevant to us today. And so in Revelation chapter 3, starting in verse 15, it says this, this is Jesus speaking. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I am going to vomit you out of my mouth. This verse gives us a clue as to what Jesus desires from you and from me. He desires that we be either hot or cold. 
And when I first was reading that uh, as, as a young person, I, I always just assumed that hot meant sort of spiritually on fire and cold meant maybe spiritually apathetic. But there's truth hidden in the context of the people who would have read this letter. And, and really, in the context of water, hot is always therapeutic. We see that in the state in which we live, Colorado. We have tourists come from all over the world to visit places like Glenwood Springs or Pagosa Springs to experience the pools that have been built around the natural hot springs. And, and then in the context of cold, that is always refreshing when we talk about receiving a glass or a cup of cold water. That has a refreshing aspect to it. And so uh, when I was in the middle of Africa, we were building bricks made out of mud in uh, this village called Songwe. And we were uh, making these bricks so that the villagers could build a church. And uh, in order to get the water, we would have to walk to the middle of the village to the well that an organization had drilled. And it was a, it was a pump lever well. And we would go there. And in the midst of this arid um, African landscape, and we were working under this hot sun, but we would pump this water from deep within the earth and it would come up refreshingly cool. And so I, I want to dive into that a little bit and pull out all the depth of the meaning of Jesus' words as he spoke to the church at Laodicea when he said, I'd rather you be hot or cold, but since you're lukewarm, I can't do anything with you. And so uh, the background of this church and this village in Laodicea is this, that it was a wealthy city, but this city didn't have its own water source. In order for the citizens of Laodicea to have drinking water, they had to build an aqueduct that stretched for six miles from a, a town called Denizli. And there was a stone aqueduct that delivered water to the village or the city of Laodicea. The problem was is that as that water traveled over the course of six miles, by the time it arrived and was useful for the people of Laodicea, the temperature had changed and it had become lukewarm. Now, that's contrasted with two other towns that were in close proximity to Laodicea. One, I've already mentioned, uh, the town of Colossae, which received a letter from Paul that we see in our Bible as Colossians. Now, Colossae, they had their own water source, and it was a deep well. And when they pulled water out of that well, it was cool and refreshing. Then there was another uh, town um, that sort of made the triangle of these three towns, and that was Hierapolis. And in Hierapolis, there is still to this day hot springs that people of that day would travel from uh, many distant miles coming to seek the health aspects of being in the, the hot springs and experiencing that therapeutic measure. And so uh, this, this letter we find contrasted with Laodicea, they don't have a water source, and the water that they get is, is brought in over the course of six miles, and by the time they get it, it's lukewarm. And so the, the readers of that letter would have known exactly what Jesus was talking about, because those who traveled to Colossae, when they arrived, they would have been served a cup of cold, refreshing water. And the travelers that arrived at, Her at Hierapolis would have been able to experience the therapeutic hot springs. But if your journey brought you to Laodicea, what would have been put before you would have been a cup of lukewarm water, which Jesus said he would rather just spew it out of his mouth. You know, we as believers, we are called to refresh and heal those in our life with what springs from within us, not from what we pipe in from other sources. And right now, there are plenty of opportunities for all of us to pipe things in from all the sources available to us in our life, social media and news articles and things like that. And when we sort of regurgitate those things that are not sourced from a living God that is deep within us, then what we are actually providing to the people around us just sort of seems like it's lukewarm and the response spiritually is people don't know exactly what to do with it. And a lot of the information that is being shared out there is just stuff that most of us want to vomit when we hear it, when we receive it. See, there's a 
Denizli of today, that, that village where Laodicea sourced its water and built the aqueduct from there. There's a Denizli of today, and it supplies us with rhetoric that's not therapeutic. And it saturates us with information that is not refreshing. If we want to be refreshing and therapeutic, we must discover the source of living water that is deep within us. Jesus' words in John chapter 7, starting in verse 37, it says this, On the last and most important day of the festival, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone is thirsty, he should come to me and drink. The one who believes in me, as the scripture has said, will have streams of living water flow from deep within him. He said this about the Spirit those who believed in Jesus were going to receive the Spirit, for the Spirit had not yet been received because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is described as living water streaming from deep within you. This is how we become a refreshing presence to those that are in our life. We need to receive the Holy Spirit and tap into the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. And that's what the world is longing to listen to and to see in action, is the very presence of the Lord living inside of you and living inside of me and bubbling up as a stream of living water. When you receive the Holy Spirit, the source of your life springs from deep within you and becomes a source of refreshing for others. You know, Jesus said that it's for our benefit that he leave us. Can you imagine that? The, the disciples who walked and talked with Jesus heard him say that he must go, but he also tagged this phrase to it. He said, he said, I must go because it's for your benefit. John chapter 16, verse seven says this, I am telling you the truth. It is for your benefit that I go away because if I don't go away, the counselor will not come to you. If I go, I will send him to you. With that verse, Jesus communicates to you and to me that we have a secret advantage, and that is receiving the Holy Spirit. See, as Jesus ascended, he said that he would send the Holy Spirit to his disciples, to you and to me, as a counselor and as a comforter. And so as we receive the Holy Spirit, it allows us to take a step up in our spiritual life as we interact with our Heavenly Father. And so um, I've told you this story before, but uh, I, I, when I received the Holy Spirit, it changed my life completely. It was one, if not the thing in my life that made my spiritual life come fully alive. And I felt like I had streams of living water bursting from deep within me. And, and I had gone away to college and I was um, attending a college where we um, had chapel services and we attended church services. And, and I was with people my own age and I, and I watched them worship in a way that I hadn't experienced. I grew up in church. I attended church nearly every Sunday and it was a great church, but nobody had talked to me about receiving the Holy Spirit. And as I watched my friends worship in a way that I felt like I, I, I was just sitting Singing, and they were worshiping. And there was a chapel service where uh, the preacher asked if anyone wanted to receive the Holy Spirit to get up out of their seat and come forward. And, and as I've told you this story before, they, they took us into a room and, and, and had um, student chaplains praying over us. And, and as uh, people were being prayed for, people were receiving the Holy Spirit. And the responses uh, were sometimes with joyful tears and sometimes with um, sort of loud prayers being prayed. And, and for me, I had a student chaplain praying for me and I didn't feel or experience anything. <laughs> And so after a while, I just looked up and, and I said, hey, let's just go to lunch. And so he and I went to the cafeteria and went to lunch. And I probably thought about it over the next couple of days. And, and then three days later, I attended an, a sort of an optional worship service. And, 
and I was tired, I was worn out, and so I, I, I moved away from my buddies a couple of seats, and, and I sat down, and I honestly just rested my head against the row of chairs that was in front of me, and I wasn't worshiping, I wasn't engaged, I wasn't desperately crying out for more of the Lord, and one of the guys that I had walked to this chapel with, he moved over a couple of chairs, and, and I didn't hear him say anything, I don't know what he said, but he simply just reached down, put his hand on my shoulder, and in the moment that he did, something erupted inside of me. And I've never been the same since. I had living water spring from within me. I received a prayer language. I, I felt like a door in my spiritual life was open. Or better yet, that a wall was torn down between me and the Lord. And I've never been the same since. You know, I, I was just um, recently on the phone with somebody who attends Colorado Church. And they've been a believer for a long time. But through a conversation with a mentor of his, uh, he was walked through a process where he was explained um, the baptism of and the receiving of the Holy Spirit. And, and it, with, with joyful words, he was communicating to me how his life has recently changed because he received the Holy Spirit. And, and he said, now I pray more. And now when I read the Bible, it's like I've never read it before. And things are just coming off of the page and coming alive to me. And so I want each and every person to experience that. I want you to hear the voice of the Lord and I want you to receive the Holy Spirit. You know, but a practical application, I, I, was, I was on the road recently and I had, uh, it was a busy day and I had stopped to get a sandwich and I jumped back on the road and was driving through some construction and I was giving my full attention to the road in front of me. And once I got through the winding um, and narrow construction lanes, I looked down and all over my shirt was the dressing that was on this sandwich. I had made the biggest mess that I have made in my adult life. The shirt is actually ruined. I, I, I tried to wash it out and, and it wouldn't come washing out. And you know, I think that when we are concentrating on everything else in our life, it is difficult to pay attention to the quality of our spiritual life. And sometimes we need to take a moment, find an off-ramp, pull away from the distractions of this world, and give our full attention to our spiritual life. And when we do, we might realize, man, we, we've made a bigger mess of it than what we've thought. And we need to press in to the presence of the Lord and give our full attention to Him. And one of the ways to give our full attention to our spiritual life is to pray to receive the Holy Spirit in our life and ask Him to come and help us with maybe the mess that we've made in our life. And I want to do that now as we close. I want to pray over you and maybe in the comfort of your own home, maybe sort of in the silence of, of a prayer um, of you just agreeing with this and saying yes to the Lord. I believe that uh, you can receive the Holy Spirit and it will change your life completely and you'll hear the voice of the Lord. So let's do that. Let's, let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, God, we love you and we stand in awe of you. Jesus, we acknowledge that you said that it's to our benefit that you go away so that we can receive the Holy Spirit. And so, God, for those who have never experienced that, for those who have never fully received the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in their life in a way that, that causes streams of living water to burst forth within them, God, I pray right now that you would just release your presence and baptize them with the Holy Spirit, God, that you would stir up fires of revival in hearts that are desperate for you. God, I pray that you would transform us from an apathetic faith, God, to, to people who are refreshingly cold with the depth of the spiritual water that is hidden deep within us as we receive the Holy Spirit, God, and that we would be a therapeutic source for those that come into our life, God, that we would be either hot or cold because we are filled with the very Spirit of God. God, right now, I just ask that you would baptize everyone listening in the Holy Spirit. I pray that you would soften their hearts to receive this and say yes to you, God, that they would hear your voice clearly like never before, that the, that the words of Scripture would not just be 
ink on pages, but it would be living and active, that it would be food for their soul. And I say that and I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Love you guys, praying for you, and I'll see you next week.